This next presentation is something that I'm actually very quite interested in seeing myself. Um, Sinra has been working with Microchip to solve a very big challenge in India within the electricity metering segment. Um, the, there's a standard, if you all follow, um, the IS-16444. Uh, um, one of the requirements within the electricity metering, smart metering segment, is addressing the IPv6 uh, challenges. So what we're going to do is now be able to show you, with Laura Wan, uh, actually solving that problem. Um, so our next speaker is Nimesh uh, Yodurkar. I'm sorry if I butchered your name, sir. So um, he will be giving a demonstration and a presentation on behalf of Microchip for the smart electricity meters. The title of his presentation is Laura Wan Enables Smart Electricity Meters in India. This is going to be really cool. I'm excited. Please, sir, it's all yours. forward go back okay thanks <clears throat> Hi, good evening uh, everyone uh, thanks Ali for uh, giving me a chance to present uh, a new concept uh, where uh, uh, the concept where we can able to do a lot of data transfer over uh, uh, Lora van <clears throat> so here about the market study says about um, the 25 percent of all uh, uh, Indian IoT will be covered by uh, utility centers, where this uh, overall use case comes in where to uh, maintain uh, the meter data uh, to see the, what, what could be the thefts and all those stuff. Uh, India is estimated around uh, 130 uh, million smart meters by 2020. We have seen few tenders flowing. Uh, here and there, like uh, smart meter uh, tenders from ESCL, let's talk about 5.6 million tenders and all those stuff. It's not very small volume, it is in big volume, and it makes sense to have a LoRa when it talks about very large number of quantities. Um, for very small, uh, confined number of quantities, definitely we can use some, something else, but where, uh, where there is very large number of quantities, then LoRa definitely makes sense. So use case benefits, meter to cash, where prepared kind of stuff, to find out the thefts, uh, to remove thefts, uh, so that uh, actually you all know the creating the energy makes a lot of pollution. So if we can able to solve those things, thefts and uh, also, uh, also losses, if we can manage that, we can definitely manage the pollution and all those things and can do a more sustainable planet. And uh, most importantly, uh, the use case can be a storage, storing the data. Uh, right now, most of uh, old use cases of meter, we are keeping the whole data or maximum of six months of data or 10 months of data into a meter and all those stuff. So that can be removed and that can be put it into the IoT world. So, why LoRaWAN? LoRaWAN, it's, it's very easy. It's very, uh, commissioning is very, I, I love LoRaWAN just because of commissioning purpose. I worked in Zigbee. I have pretty good experience in Bluetooth. Uh, right now, I'm also working a few of use cases in Wi-Fi. But why I like LoRa, most of the time, LoRaWAN, because of its easiness of commissioning. There is no need of commissioning, factory commissioning can be useful uh, when you do a deployment. Um, another is, uh, it's, LoRaWAN always talk about IoT, isn't it? They talk about how data is going to reach to application server, how is data, is, it's not going to reach to only a gateway, how that data is going to reach to IoT uh, application server. So it's a true IoT network, so, and it gives, you a, gives us a more sustainable uh, network. It's highly secure, as uh, Diana told us. It's a two-way security in and out. Both ways security can be implemented on the LoRaWAN. Uh, with microchip uh, hardware security, definitely it will give, give us a motor, more benefit and it becomes uh, more secure. So what are the uh, smart meter requirements? The first and most important requirement is 
the meter has to be uh, IS-160 per four compliant. What this means is it will have uh, larger data requirements where mm, large data will be going to be transferred from one end to another end. Then large number of tampers, uh, India has very different kind of requirements and always large number of tampers uh, to be reported to uh, application server. Then uh, there could be a requirement of taking the load survey of six months, three months, two months according to utility requirements. Then again, it became very large transactions. And billing data for India, it is quite different than any other country. I've seen that. Uh, because KV, KW, KVH, KVARH, and then uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different different time zones requirement and all those stuff. So billing data will be always very huge. So uh, as I, as we as we see, as uh, one six triple four data packet size is very uh, different and very huge. Uh, it can be divided into two parts. So the first part is command, which is going from your I, uh, IS-16 uh, triple for compliant HEA system, which will be around, uh, to get instantaneous reading, it is, it is just my analysis, uh, 36 bytes of data from uh, one uh, end to meter, so that meter can reply into that. The billing data packet size is around 68 bytes. So none of data is very small, like one byte or two byte, where uh, the LoRa band is basically started with. Whereas when meter replies, uh, it will be uh, 108 bytes of uh, in which is which has instantaneous data, and where billing data, if you see, it will be go up to ma maximum uh, 232 bytes. So this is few of examples. I just put it and I just try to get it from uh, uh, meter. One of meter what uh, what we are demonstrating on a Sendra booth right now. And here you can see this data size is really huge. And how to transfer that data size is one of the difficulty on the LoRa van. So if you see in the LoRa van, we have uh, SF uh, 12 51 bytes on SF 11. There will be a 51 bytes maximum payload. SF 10 is again on 51 bytes. And now it's changed with SF 9, SF 8, and uh, SF 7, where you can see it is uh, 122, 222, and again 222 bytes. So if I want to have a IS-16 triple four compliant network deployment, uh, it, is, it has to be over here, isn't it? Uh, it has to be over here so that in one packet data trans transfer can be uh, easily possible. So now network uh, need to have a very high capacity network, number of gateways will be high, and overall cost of deployment is going to be really, really big. And that will definitely cost to your end customer, our end customer, or in the sense of ourselves also. So at least SF8 network should be there so that in one packet, all data, at least billing data, we can do a transfer. And another option is uh, doing the fragmentation. So again, if you do a fragmentation, then uh, to get that act to, uh, accurate fragmentation to be delivered on application server, we need to use confirmed data transfer, isn't it? So in LoRa, one, we have two types of data transfer. One is called as confirmed data transfer, and another one is unconfirmed data transfer. So whereas uh, to reach the message accurately to application server, we need to have uh, confirmed data transfer. So over here, the confirmed data transfer will definitely going to increase the overhead on a gateway. All confirmed data transfer will need to have acknowledgement from application server. And that will increase the overall load to a gateway to a network. So here, when we come on an energy meter segment, we are talking about million piece. Million piece in a one small location. It's not million piece in very large location. We are talking about 600, 700K in a very small place. Okay, there, how many gateways, how many uh, gateway can support the confirmed replies and all those things has to be taken care. So overall, if we do a very uh, accurate uh, data fragmentation, then the problem will be uh, your get number of gateways will definitely going to increase. So overall, with the traditional methodology, if you are going to do it, the cost of network is very high. So possible solution, uh, possible solution, one possible solution could be uh, doing it um, 
uh, uh, doing the IS-16444 packet, uh, I can say parser, okay, it could be very simple. Uh, IS-16444 parser could be inside a LoRaWAN device itself or module. Module could be a more Indian style of speaking, but uh, module can do all those uh, parsing uh, inside module. So over here, there, will be, there could be a few pros and cons. So definitely a benefit of that is then it becomes a very small packet which can do a transfer from meter to uh, application server, uh, whereas uh, uh, the cons will be it could be a very specific data payload has been transferred from uh, your uh, LoRa WAN device to application server. That, that, that I, we, I can say that that, that will be a, a customized packet and may not be, and it will be a different for a different manufacturers. Then again, the backend system has to be different for different, different manufacturers. So it could be much more uh, difficult to handle. Also, it requires high-end microcontrollers at a LoRa, uh, uh, LoRaWAN end devices. Uh, where memory requirement may be a very, very large, and there could be a requirement of data storage, uh, because when the server is going to ask for a data, we may not, be, uh, may not be knowing of that. So those all will increase the overall end device price, and more importantly, not only price, it is all about uh, uh, the challenges to maintain those kind of customization for a very longer uh, long, uh, longer time. So here I'm coming with the solution number two where uh, you can do a data transfer in a fragmentation format. So say a fragmented data comes to a LoRaWAN device, then uh, the defragmentation and uh, decryption and verification will be done by module itself and it will be sent to a meter. Similar way, a uh, meter will send that data to a module or, or any uh, LoRa end device, and again, fragmentation and encryption and uh, signature will be done by module, and that fragmented data, sorry, fragmented data will be sent to a uh, network server. So uh, next slide, we will uh, talk about what is the benefit of fragmentation and all those stuff. So we have tested this with uh, SAMR34 uh, device, uh, microchip SAMR34 device, and for signing and encryption decryption, we, ha we have used ECC 608, uh, which is a uh, new, uh, which is uh, security device from a microchip. So benefit over here is uh, the fragmentation methodology what we, uh, we are using right now for a demo purpose is uh, FEC. Uh, the, which is called as forward error, uh, error correction methodology, which has been discussed on uh, FOTA implementation of uh, LoRaWAN. So this is well known, and it is meant for transferring on a multicast. And the multicast uh, stay, uh, says about it is um, un, uh, unconfirmed message. So it can be used for unconfirmed. The advantage of FEC is even 20% or 30% of data loss, still autonomously we can generate entire uh, package itself. So this is uh, one more uh, very biggest advantage. Another advantage is we can keep the simple uh, HES, which is, has been already approved or al already proven with the IS-16444. Uh, so this is what uh, we have uh, done. A, a demo. Right now, its demo is available on uh, Sendra booth, uh, where this, uh, the meter and LoRa model has been connected. And on the LoRaWAN model, we are using uh, uh, SAMR 35J18A, and for security purpose, we are using ATCC608 device. And for, uh, for current demo, for fragmentation and defragmentation, we freeze up the ports. Uh, that can be changed according to requirement itself. OK. Uh, So the, the large data transfer we have uh, shown to uh, shown uh, in a demo right now, and we have tested this with 1024, 512, and 256 bytes of data for more than uh, one month or so. And we've seen that there is no packet loss at such. Uh, and with the ADR2 intelligent ADR, we can uh, make sure 
This data size can be uh, changed automatically because ADR will uh, gives uh, help uh, to change the end uh, payload as such. So demo is available on Sendra both. You can anytime come, I can show you how this fragmentation has been done and multiple packets has been transferred from uh, device to uh, network server. And even for few commands, network server does a fragmentation and those fragmentation uh, comes to a device and a device can reply onto that particular command. So this thanks a lot for uh, giving me a chance to present. So uh, I didn't give uh, Nimish a fair introduction because I couldn't get his bio in time. Um, so I'm going to read it out just to give you the credit that you deserve. Um, so Nimish worked with, uh, works with Microchip uh, for over seven years. He has 15 plus years of strong experience in embedded designs and wireless designs, highly skilled in IoT protocols, embedded software, embedded Linux, device drivers, EDA, consumer electronics. He's got strong experiences in handling multiple wireless technologies like Zigbee, 6 low pan, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and of course LoRaWAN. Uh, can you give me a quick explanation on how long uh, this project has been ongoing for you on trying to solve this uh, challenge uh, with electricity meters in Lower Wen. Yeah, we are working since from last uh, year about four to five months now. And one month we kept it on uh, continuously on the testing purpose so that we can able to understand how many packet loss it's happening. Uh, because in energy meter and in Lower Wen, each packet does make sense actually. So. Uh, we have done that, and we have seen there is no packet loss at all. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you, and everyone, another round of applause. If you want to see the live demo, it's on the uh, space, uh, on the center table, actually. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Right.